Because she was like, she saw the backpack. She was like, school girl, backpacks, pencils, ho. Ho. I was like, how'd you get from school to ho? But I'm mad at you. What I did write is, how many times you gonna wear bra and panties? Or matching separates? How many times we gonna see that? It's giving very Vanjie in season 11. She came out with that same, you know, that same bodysuit or that same like swimsuit. How many times we gonna see this girl? Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Drag from the Left, a weekly digital series where we review RuPaul's Drag Race and current social events from a radical leftist perspective. We are here on Stereo every Sunday at 6 p.m. The edited versions of our episode release everywhere where podcasts are streamed, except Apple Music right now, as well as YouTube, the Wednesday following. My name is the very Reverend Dr. Juanita Bindum. My name is Avery. My drag name this week is Cece Tyson. Of course, to honor and respect our late, great, um, now ancestor, Cicely Tyson. Um, We would be remiss if we did not at least speak her name um, on this podcast tonight. A true legend, a true icon. (laughs) Uh, My mom's favorite actress, my grandmama's favorite actress. Yes, baby. Um, Yeah, so rest in peace to a legend. Uh, so what a powerful force. What a powerful force. And we are truly yes. blessed to have had the opportunity to have her in our lives. And thanks to technology, she is truly immortalized. So, you know, if you want to see something from Mrs. Cicely Tyson, just Google her. That's somebody who you Google. Okay? Do Google her. Um, <laughs> Drag Race. Drag Race. Episode 5 of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13. Ooh, it's a lot to get through. Okay, so overall thoughts. Broad thoughts of this episode. Broad thoughts. Um, you know, bad girls club. That's my bad. That's my. Bad. <laughs> yes, I bad said ooh, ch- Chile. Category ooh, is Chile. bad girls club. How about you? It was yeah. My overall thoughts were ooh, Chile. Um, and that's a good ooh, Chile, and a and a bad one at the same time because there was so these looks like are some of them are out of this world. And then untucked. Ooh, so let's let's get into it. Let's not waste no time. Let's get right into it. So, All right, so here we go. RuPaul enters the, the workroom. We are down. Miss Kamora Hall has been eliminated, sent home. The Mackie doll is back in her box and <laughs> shipped USPS Deluxe expedited shipping, which means she should make it home sometime in, in December. April. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, April if we're lucky. And it is time for the mini tops because for some reason, RuPaul love to make a baby joke, nasty ass. Um, yeah, it was terrifying. Uh, it is a little terrifying, but they are dressed up as cute little babies. Uh, you know, some of them in these baby costumes, it shows me that I don't know if they know what's a mini challenge, what's a main stage challenge, what's a what. Because some of them girls' yeah. baby outfits was turned uh-huh. looks. Yes. Baby outfits, Simone's baby it. wig. I was like, yeah, you should save that for a runway. I mean, okay, girl. Uh, but all in all, the mini challenge, Lala Ree takes the cake. Lala Ree, she gets her $2,500 to fiercedrag.com. Yes, I need to go on there. They have some cute shoes, girl. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, for $2,500, she could get her a couple pair of cute shoes. Oh, yeah. She, um, she is not going to be without a good shoe game with this gift card. Um, this mini challenge really doesn't serve any purpose, but besides to give promotion to the sponsor, which, you know... Yeah. Yeah, I guess it just is what it is. That's Catholic. It is what it is. We got yeah. to see uh, Tamisha look like Benjamin Button. So, I mean, like, <laughs> uh, I was into it. When Tamisha said, this ain't no baby, Lala Ree heard the beat. She said, it's time for the twerk. Girl. <laughs> okay. That was I was like, babies don't dance like that. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Babies be twerking. There's this video on TikTok. It is so cute uh, of how babies dance. Yeah. And, Babies be doing what they be doing. I be into it. They be doing the Millie Rock. They mm-hmm. do the little, the little up and down. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so um, funny. My sister-in-law just sent a video of my nephew in the group chat. He was dancing, and everybody was talking about how he was twerking. He's am I the only one through. who gets baby fever who doesn't have a uterus? Because I so don't have one, and I so be wanting a baby. I have, and like, you know, I don't want no kids. I've had it recently. And it's only because girl, I, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's only because I miss my nephew, though. That's the only reason why I got. And everyone on my timeline has kids now, so that's all I see. And I'm like, I miss my nephew. I want him back. 
<laughs> I know that's fucking right. Um, I'm trying to watch how many cuss words I use on the podcast. So, you know, I'm giving myself, like, trying to, like, do a tally sheet of trying to <laughs> cuss uh, no more than five plus or minus two. Uh, oh, you know, that's not what great, me. Great. Girl. Uh, so, mini challenge when RuPaul announces it is that time of the season where it's time for a ball, baby. Yes. It's time for a ball. One this, of my favorite um, challenges. challenge is the bag ball, baby. It's all a bag, a ball, all about bags. And we have mm-hmm. our three subcategories, which are mixed bag so that's the one that got a little bit of hidden meaning double entendre mm-hmm. a little bit of red herring that type of moment <laughs> um intentionally deceitful pull the wool over one's eyes be careful mm-hmm. um that's going to be cute and then we got miss money bags baby which was similar like lady ballers last season you know give that opulence yes get that opulence and then gag us with your baggers <laughs> relax your throat while you gag is so hard <laughs> um, and, you know, as we will see, some of these girls have very deep throats. Their throats are relaxed. And some other girls, it's a little tight. I am not gagging <laughs> on the baggies. I will not be gagging on the baggies. But Roger you know, hair I'm, go, I'm not gagging. I'm not. <laughs> Girl. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you a short story. So one time, so this is before I was, like, as sexually liberated as I am at this day and age. But, mm-hmm. like, you, we get fed so many messages about how men... Um, the things that you need to do to make them feel comfortable and do what they got to do in, in, in the bedroom. And this one time, one of my early um experiences, and I am not no sass queen of any, of any, in no way, shape, or form, but I was doing some little things with somebody who had like a smaller thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was trying to do it like it was uh, like a big thing. Gotta be careful. <laughs> Has to be more careful. <laughs> oh girl, I was a mess. It was a whole mess. I, let's move forward because I'm, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, a mess. I'm being a mess. So they announced the challenge. They announced the challenge. So look number yeah. one and look number two are things that the girls can pack themselves, fashion themselves. Right. What they got to do. There was preparation, mm-hmm. but for the third look, gaggers with your baggers, their looks need to be made entirely out of bags. The girls are able to use their own, of course, undergarments, body modifications, hair, makeup, and some mm-hmm. additional notions that are usually on the fabric wall, but the majority of their outfit needs to be uh, made out of bags. They had so many type of bags over there. They had jewelry bags. They had handbags. They had bean bags. They mm-hmm. Duffel bags. Duffel bags. They had a lot of bags. And the thing about bags is, the, the beautiful thing about it is, it is it is a textile, so it is a mm-hmm. material, but a bag does not yield you a lot of yardage and making a garment. So you have to spend a lot of time deconstructing right. um, this with, like, scissors and exacto knives. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I saw glue. in a couple of girls, hot glue, <laughs> because, like, you can't really sew through a lot of that. Um, yeah. that material, at least, especially if you're not a trained, um, you know, seamstress, like girls was breaking needles left and right. So I always think that that's uh, 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 yeah. an interesting process. So going uh, into it, uh, who did you think was going to do a good job with the sewing and who was not? Um, I thought God make was going to do a good job. I thought Tina Burner was going to do well. Uh, did not know Utica had those skills, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> When she when she revealed that she was a seamstress and she does this professionally, I was like, oh, okay, she's going to do well. Um, I thought Tamisha was going to do well too, and she and she did. Um, I'm trying not to give my like look critique. I'm trying to wait till we get to that. I know, right, right, right. This uh, is called the but, exposition word yeah. of the week is exposition. <laughs> a little foreshadowing, a little lead into um, what I will say about the sewing challenge and some of the discourse responding to the sewing challenge is that um, a lot of the people, because we know some of the girls can't sew. Simone, Candy, La La Reed, they cannot, they don't know how. Um, and a lot of the f- discourse online was like, how do you come on Drag Race and you don't know how to sew? Like, what is wrong with you? You knew you was coming, you knew she'd been prepared for this, or whatever. Um, sewing is a skill. Um, it's a talent. It's not one that can't be developed, but that also takes time, money, and resources. It's similar Absolutely. to acting challenges and things like that, where girls are like, you knew it was coming to Drag Race, why weren't you prepared? Why didn't you take an improv class? So now our class analysis comes in right, because not everyone has the time, money, or resources to take a sewing class outside of work or take an acting challenge or take an acting class outside of work, right? Those things take money 
time and resources and just to say, why didn't you do this? Why couldn't you be more prepared? Is lacking a little bit of a, a class and race analysis there. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, I mean, and just a general bit of like, what the fuck's going on in the world? Uh, we had talked about this in the previous episode and we're not going to... Girl, I'm not about to call in or call out nobody. I hear y'all. I can tell that y'all out there listening. And, like, I thought mm-hmm. that was for the after show. Girl, we about to get into these looks. Calm down. Relax. Yeah, the looks are coming. Get you a drink. Get you a drink. Mm-hmm. But I will say, because I, for once, we're doing great on time where we are in the show. And um, <laughs> uh, I think also that accessing, even if you had the resources, ex- accessing things right now is very complicated. Um, right. You know, uh, and also sewing. Yeah, you can learn how to do it online, but that is a, a specific trade that I think would you would benefit from a lot of in-person. And typically, yeah. like, at least around here, like, you could go to the Michaels or the Joanne Fabrics up the street, and they have, like, $100. You could take these classes or blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. But they're not doing these in-person classes. Why? Because there's a viral airborne disease out here that is killing people. Right. Um, you know? And... That's the other thing about competition television in general, though, is competition television adds a multitude of layers on top of the talent that you already have to perform. American Idol, right? I don't just have to be a good singer now, but I need to be a good vocal producer. I need to be charismatic. I need to have Mm -hmm. a look. People may not just like me for who I am. You know what I'm saying? I have to have an online social media presence so Mm -hmm. that I can have longevity after leaving this show. It's just a lot. You know, going on and day to day, if the girls are working uh, primarily as their primary uh, working um, as drag performers, as their primary source of income, I'm certain that they have a niche that is making sure that they get in a coin. Right. Um, some of these girls, they niche is not to know how to do design a couture ball gown, you know? Right. And if you're doing eight shows a week to pay your rent, who has... The time. The time. To learn how to do. Uh, especially if you have a beautiful person in your community who is not a drag performer or is a drag performer, but, but know how to do that so they can make you some things. Right. Um, right. And then that's also benefiting the community economic. But I, I will say this, that I am, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, your mama should die, bitch, because you don't know how to sew. <laughs> but I right. will say, coming onto Drag Race, I think of anything strategically rather, you know what it is. And you know, I like competition. You were an athlete. You know how competition work, you know. Right. You're a writer. That's not a directly competitive industry, but there is, com- oh, I mean, it's not it like is. y'all in a con. you know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah. I'm entering this week to win this thing, which it is sometimes, but there right. is competition. You have things that set you apart. I would have not shown up to Drag race even if i didn't know how to sew without some slopers or patterns made for me that's me hitting up the person who made one of my costumes and being like i need a a general silhouette drawn cut yeah. out for me and then i can to stitch make, it together uh, <laughs> a tube, yeah. a two, two scenes yeah. so i could do a tube dress and then that's pretty much all you, if you know how to make one one dress, thing yeah you can take that one dress and then you can hot glue a whole bunch of shit on top of that but you need a good foundation a good base gg good won this challenge last season which I didn't necessarily think she won that that week. I wouldn't have picked her, but her look was pristine, and it's because she spent the majority of the time making that beautiful dress that was underneath, and then gluing those balls. She had a good bodice that it mm-hmm. laid on her well, which is necessary. Um, also, I want y'all to know there is a very big difference between knowing being a seamstress and knowing how to sew, and then being a designer. Those are two very separate skills. Yes. Um, so there are people out here, or like the person who probably tailors your suit. Um, they can tailor and deconstruct and they know math and geometry and technical skills, but that not be that might not be the person that can you go to to design a look for you. Um, right. There are people like fashion houses have legitimate illustrators, people who literally all they do is draw, animate, sketch, and then someone else patterns these and figures out. Uh, I hate to spend so much time talking about Gigi Good, but her mother's a good example of this is Gigi's mom is not a designer. Gigi's mom is a seamstress and a dressmaker. The majority of Gigi's looks are designed by Gigi. And her mother knows how to pattern them and make what it, it what was in her imagination come to life. But if, if you exactly. wanted her, if, she, if it was left up to her mom to like come up with the creative, we would get a much different look, which will play into when we go through these, uh, when we go through these looks, because um, mm-hmm. I got some commentary Same. on that. I want to know, how do you feel about if you came into the room and you did have some skills, right? Like, you knew how to sew. And I'm uh-huh. not saying you got to be some tour de force, you know, or whatever. But you know how to make your leotard. You know how to make a, your basic ball gown. Mm-hmm. Just a basic one, you know. And would you help other girls? I would. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely would. I'll definitely pull an AJ O'Hara or a Got Mick or a Utica. Um, because again, I live by this principle. Helping someone else do well or helping us someone else shine does not diminish my light. If I go in there and I'm confident and I know absolutely. I'm about to turn it, I know I'm about to turn it no matter what y'all wear, what what smoke is there if I help you get your look together when I see that you're struggling? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, I would absolutely take that route, especially if I had the time to, to help someone. I'm not going to sacrifice myself to help somebody else. But um, if I saw my girl struggling and she needed a little bit of help and I was and I had some time, and some expertise to spare. Why not? Yeah, very that. And see, you know, I'm an educator, so I know how to help you help you. So right. for me, it would be like, all right, girl, I'm about to draw this pattern. I'm OK, and you need to cut mm -hmm. this pattern out. You need to lay this fabric on top and then cut this fabric out in the shape of this pattern. I'll be back in yeah. half an hour. I'll see you in a bit. You know, <laughs> We I'm are both so great at I delegating do. and like giving instructions. Yep. <laughs> like, well, I'm not going to do it yeah, for you, also, but I'm going to tell you how to get there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But again, like you said, if I know that I am sickening, these things, ultimately, the majority of things in these competitions really come down to taste level. Of course, you know, construction and all of that. But like a general perspective, a strong point of view, you know, mm -hmm. And a certain level of taste that is either understood or causes a ruckus in others, you know, some type of visceral reaction is what's necessary. So, you know, you can style like I was talking to a local drag queen who y'all will hear from later um, in this season. Um, but I've been talking to her and encouraging her about like and not encouraging her more like full on fangirling because I'm really I, I mean, I can encourage. But I'm not saying I'm encouraging her drag because I far beyond my level right, right. um but Avery knows who i'm talking about this fabulous fabulous queen here in cleveland whose name i won't drop specifically um not yet but i was encouraging her i was like she's like my sewing skills are not where they need to be i was like baby this is a matter of taste if you learn how to make you a leotard and a circle skirt you know what a dress is it's a circle skirt attached to the bottom part of a leotard you learn how to make these two <laughs> things baby you good to go. You better, it's a bag challenge. Make the dress that you know how to make and then cut them bags up and put it on mm -hmm. there in a cute way and they go let it slide, baby. And right. those are Absolutely. the weeks when you're not going for the gold. Them is the weeks when you not in the bottom. Yes. The bottom. And that's what Simone was saying. She was like, I'm glad to be safe right now. She was like, I'm not a sewer. Not My outfit got me through. I'm good. I will say if her if her DIY make it yourself dress had it been a little bit better, she could have been in the top because those first two looks were stunning. But well, we I understand what she was saying. Because I think that I was surprised that Simone did not have more skills, um, and not just in sewing, but like in a as a crafter, like you know, because like some people, you know, I can make stuff like you know out of hot glue and Mod Podge and all different type of you know, I probably mm -hmm. did something more avant garde, you know, um, but. I was surprised she didn't have more skills, especially because Gigi is in the house of Avalon, and I know that, you know, she hit up her girl to help prepare. Yeah. At least I would have hit up my girl to help prepare, uh, you know, and you know, it is rumored that Gigi and Simone will have a similar trajectory in the competition in terms of being successful mm -hmm. um, and, like, winning many challenges and, uh, and whatnot and being, like, having a good uh, support from the fan base. Um, so I was surprised that she didn't come in and know how to do a little more specifically because she has such a strong point of view. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a big, a big misstep because this could have been those moments where she could have been, like we said, as we go into these looks a little bit later, but if you watch the episodes, look one and look two were above satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, you can't get an A and A and then get an F and think you about to make the, make the list, you know? Yeah. Um, or a D minus. And the thing is, as much as they're comparing the girls to one another, they're really comparing them to their own, like on, to their own level, right? There's an expectation that if you are the fashion girl, and who cares if that's fair or not, whatever, mm -hmm. but that that's the rule. That's how it's set, you know? Like yeah. if you come into the competition, Avery, and I know that you the bitch who got the motherfucking highest split, the, the highest kick and the lowest split, and then you do the dance challenge and your split crunchy and your leg kick was weird. I'm gonna be like, that's funny because on your audition tape, you did this. So right. I wasn't expecting homegirl to do that because I mean, we know that her leg don't do that, but your leg do that. Yeah. So what's going on? Yeah. Um, so that that's the thing. But I will say is that her taste level is unwavering. And she does understand how to be a cohesive, uh, make a be is a, a make a whole cohesive look that mm -hmm. um, stays in her point of view, and that I, that I appreciate. 
So do that I. I appreciate. Um, before we get into these looks, I would like to take a short break to leave some room for our sponsors. So we'll be back in just a few seconds. Hey, everybody, and we are back. This is the very Reverend Dr. Juanita Bindham on the line. And this is Avery. My drag name this week is CC Tyson. Rest in peace, baby. And you are tuned into Drag from the Left, a weekly digital series where we review RuPaul's Drag Race and relevant social issues from a radical leftist perspective. You get in here like swimwear, baby. We abolitionists, we anti racist, mm -hmm. anti capitalist, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Afro feminists, all mm -hmm. the motherfucking shit. Like, you know, you come to dinner with us, you, you, you likely to get pissed off. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you also going to have a good time. You're going to leave drunk. You're going to leave with your belly uh -huh. full. You're going to leave with some laughs. Oh, baby. You and might not agree with us you. politically, but you're going to have a good time. And we're going to love on you because that's... that's we're going to love on you. I'm trying to, but we're going to get you together I'm if you need to. explain need this dynamic to someone. And sometimes I do this thing and like, it takes a... You know, you've known me for years now. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to understand the nuance and people shtick. So, yes. you know, I do this thing where I be like kidding, but not really a little nice, <laughs> nasty. It's a part of my affect. Yeah, you um, do. And I generally mean love by it. But like, once you know me, you know, I'm like one of the most giving, you know, yeah. uh, people who do, the work and the way that I am is really rooted in, in loving people. Uh, I just like to be a shady bitch sometimes. And I get to, <laughs> I spend the majority of my time, you know, I, I get to be a little bad sometimes too. Okay. Like, leave, leave me alone. Right. Uh, but all that to be said, I want to uh, get, start getting into these looks. So Let's do once it. again, the category is the bag ball. There are three sections. We have mixed bag, baby. We got Miss Money Bag and Gagas with your baggers. I think we're going to do these in groups of three. So we're going to judge all three category girls' by looks. Category. Uh, uh -huh. category by cat. Um, all three girls' looks together. Um, so we'll do each girl's oh, three looks and okay. one judging. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, what we will do is uh, we'll do them in the order of presentation, and mm -hmm. we will start with Miss Denali. Mm. I'm gonna work my way backwards. So, I'm gonna work my way backwards. Yeah. The the look she made herself was the best one. Um, yeah, I actually really liked it. I love the pattern she used. I love the inspiration behind it. I love her makeup and the uh, stone she glued to her face to make to give the whole effect. Um, I like the headpiece. It was all really, I think it was all really cool. Um, but the the first two, well, the first, the, the airbag one was just a no. It looked unfinished. Um, and the socks, the little ankle socks and the, the little booty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the money bags look was cute. The Corelli DeVille moment. It wasn't like a standout. Oh my God, I love this, but it was nice. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give Denali about 45 seconds of my time. So I will <laughs> go in reverse order as well. So her looks for Gaggers with your baggers. Um, I was not gagged, but this was a beautiful look. I think in the amount of time with the materials she was working for, I would have loved to see the bottom be this full, huge, like, teacup, like, upside-down shaped teacup skirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the neck piece would have been completely uh, drenched in flowers. I wouldn't see any of the framing. But I do understand that they're yeah. under a time yeah. constraint, and this was mm -hmm. good. This was had a strong point of view. It was not ugly. It was not displeasing. And I will give Denali props for using jewels to bring more dress Back to the mm -hmm. Dia de los Mortos inspired face rather than yeah. painting on her face. Um, I thought this was much more heightened. And it was probably actually quicker to glue these stones yeah, on that's than to be meticulously have to do the paint. Yeah. Um, so I love this. The Coelho de Ville look left something to be desired. I, I, I really wasn't into mm -hmm. it. Um, it wasn't enough. If I needed, if she was going to do that, I needed to actually for her to give me fur and pattern. I needed to see Dalmatian. I needed... Um, the fur on the on the collar to not look like something that came from a polar bear, and that is that's just a level of taste. Um, in the photo that she posted online, they did her mouth more exaggerated, kind of like mm -hmm. Ronald Dawes, the witches, how the mouth uh, just really gets really like spread and pointy. Um, I wish I, that would have played on the runway, but I do think putting the cigarette on the fingernail, uh, she pays really close that's attention. Cute. Whoever designs the nail pieces for her is really sickening because she did a beat. If you notice close up last week when she was in the bottom, her thumbnail and her pointer finger were like a beak. Um, mm. And again, I will say I do think her um, 
the mixed bag. I do think the concept was really, 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 really good. I didn't know if I necessarily um, liked the execution. Like for me, it would actually probably would have been more beneficial for it not to be a skirt, for it to be like a like a pant leotard look, and yeah. then the black ankle booty. I would have rather she did a boot where I didn't see the break at Some the Eric J boot that um, came up like to yeah. her ass. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, all in all, this was this was satisfactory, satisfactory. Yeah, it wasn't but, you know, coming in the bottom. Exactly, but you know, coming out of the bottom too, especially when you didn't think you deserved to be in the bottom too, you needed to. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you you packed what you packed and you you presented it well, so I I, right. I that is good. Next right. to the to the bat is oh my god, Joey J. <laughs> it's the uh. <laughs> It's Joey J. I'm going to leave my opinions, my certain opinions about Joey J quiet for a little while, but uh, yeah. Candy Muse's little, little boo thing um, then did these looks, and I am, um, you know, why would you come on a show mm -hmm. and this is not even, so you know how there's like, there's a taste issue, and then there's like a funding execution thing where like you know, they just can't. It's difficult. This is a taste thing. Mm -hmm. I am so sick and tired of this mall drag. Like, this is <laughs> not, it's not even mall. This is literally glitter. This is dots. This is wet seal. This is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, and not that there's anything wrong with shopping at those places, but we all know that that is not where we're going for the most heightened fashions. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and we know this. Yeah. Also, and it's a standard the for the. Shoe, that she wore the, she wore the same shoe in two of the looks, which I mean it's okay, but like ugh. so let's go in order. This bitch, I don't know what's going on with Joey <laughs> or if it's the nerd, but this IV bag you are over her. <laughs> it's an IV bag. It's an IV bag. I, I was going for IV bag. Shit, poor bless person for us. <laughs> Reminded me of that moment, like, girl, you're not getting it. <laughs> I'm trying we to already feed you done this here. <laughs> we already done this, girl. Like, yeah. <laughs> so for the I, for the Ivy bag look, Go though, I will say I liked the con. Like, even without, even though she missed the poison Ivy kind of pun, um, I do like the concept. I didn't like the execution, but I thought in theory, it was cute. She should have came out in a full on poison ivy look and let the ivy bag be secondary, like poison ivy in yeah. the hospital. And the, yeah. the ivy bag would have been green because I would have told him, and it's full of chlorophyll, baby. Get my, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a whole, it's it's a lot she could have had done. And then that other look, um, money bag, money wear, money wear. The blazer, yeah. the red blazer underneath the the over the legging, over that girl bye. Uh, I got, number three, I got Batman. La La Rie. She's Batman like villain sidekick. <laughs> Girl. So we're not going to talk about her last look? No, it's ugly. <laughs> um, La La Rie. La La Rie. So. My La girl. Was, my girl. Now look, La La Rie is, uh, is the, the uh, narrator of the season for me. Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> Um, I also like I like everything about her. I think she gives good quality drag. We know this. I don't think that's like in the general canon of what's being talked about. La La Rie is that she's a bad drag queen. I don't think that's what's being said. Um, I think she's cute. But with that being said, there some of these looks left something to be desired. So I do think the bag of bones was a genius idea, yeah. but was not executed well. Um, that bag. The bone should have been leaping out of that bag. She should have been covered mm. in bones. Yeah. She should have been covered in bones. And it would she could have even did it where it was like small skeletons reaching up and climbing her. Yeah, you know, and really get over the top. And bones, you can get plastic bones pretty cheap. And the other thing is that the, the bones needed to have, she needed to have had her homegirls with rhinestones, rhinestone in them or glitter paint in them so that they really like shot off the body, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, she could have did a steel bone, like a, a a boned corset on the outside, climbing up with the back of bones. That just it didn't go far far enough. Yeah. Um, so that, but the idea was cute. Mm -hmm. Um, her lady bog, and she said, "I'm giving you a black bitch from Africa." Yeah. <laughs> she looks so good with no wig. I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that second look. That money bags look was so cute. The color great. The pattern great. Mm -hmm. Um. 
these coach purses that they made was so ugly. Yeah, like they put they put stars on. Like, what do they give them to decorate them with? Because like, I don't like anybody. <laughs> like, we should just have the plain bag. Yeah, you pick a color like, for your outfit and don't put nothing else on it. That's oh god, child. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that look. <laughs> now, now we we gonna have to spend a minute talking about that. what what is, what is this? Uh, this gaggers with your baggers, Lollary. So Did when she walked. Up? When 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 the lights dawned on her and she walked out to the main stage, I turned my mind went to that Nene video. What is this, honey? Honey, what is this? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, and I think Lala really knew this. She was just like, I don't have enough time. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the skill set. You know. I'm going to try to make this work. I'm probably going to be in the bottom. Hopefully my first two looks will save me, but if they don't, I'm ready to turn this on. I really feel like that was her mentality going out to them because she knew her course that wasn't even fully covered. Like mama had to know that that look was not going to be satisfactory on the runway, but she didn't have any other option. I mean, you got to go out there. So. I was, I, I was, I was very, I was sad to see that. I was like, girl, the same thing Nicole Byer said, you couldn't even cut them up. You couldn't even yeah. cut them up. Yeah. Nicole Byer is a great guest judge, actually. I, I enjoy her. Like I think the guest judges are going to cycle this way. Cause That's what I think, too. Win every week. They, mm-hmm. I think, the, I think the um guest judges are inside of the quarantine bubble, too. I agree. Like, Lonnie Love is probably going to be back next week or week after next. She did a good job. I'm liking these fat black girls. Yeah, they are giving quite, they're funny and they're giving like great advice. Um, so I really enjoy them as the best is good best and best more niggas on the panel is not gonna piss me off. Um, not at all. <laughs> so, yeah, so we know that I was disappointed. Elliot with two teeth. Uh, once again, I'm gonna say this, I said it before, I would say it again. She has yet to wear hair on this fucking runway, except for that one wig that she wore last week, which I'm almost certain was borrowed. It don't look right. You go out of all the bags you get to pick to be, you go be the dollar store, the dollar general. This is unsponsored, but dollar general, if you would like to. Um, <laughs> you uh you go be a dollar store gift bag. You go be a dollar store gift bag. Yeah. Not even you could have been a bag a row, you could have been a Chanel bag. You could have been a <laughs> uh, a shopping bag from fit. That would have been cute. You could have been a tail far. Paper bag, a tail far bag. <laughs> well, she knows she likes black culture, so she might be a tail far bag. Child. You know I have one. I have two, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have two. I have one. But did, did, did a boo purchase yours, or did you have to buy yours yourself? No, I purchased mine all on my own. Yeah, mine were gifted. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Shout out to, shout out to, uh, you know who you is. You know you is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Elliot, no, and they're like, I'm like, I don't even want to talk about the rest of the look because they didn't really do that. No, lie. The yeah, last look, they the did last a really look. good job. Yes, it was that very well look. done. Honestly, mm-hmm. that was the best thing that they've worn this whole time. Yeah, agreed. And she made it herself, so, which is something to to applaud. She did well. I would, I kind of want that coat actually. Like you know, oh, same. I, I want that, that trench. Put a belt on it. Woo. All right, everyone, you've heard it here. Uh, Elliot with two T's has received a compliment. We, I said something nice for her. For her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she did that. But I will say, to caveat to that, I will say, I feel like I've seen this wig every time she's been on the show. You talking about the pink one? Every time she has appeared in the episode, I feel like this wig has made an appearance. That's shake and go. That's shake and go from the hair beauty store on the corner that is either owned by somebody that ain't black. Uh, if that's what you bought. Take it off. off. Take oh, it off. Flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Tamisha Iman is coming for you. Not this. Well, she is coming for us <laughs> later this week. Yeah, a little not later. With <laughs> not with these looks. So, I of course, you know, when we have people that we're fans of, I, I am going to get my caveat. I fucking love Tamisha Iman. And this is a Tamisha Iman yes. stand podcast, stand account, and stand everything. And when you stand somebody like, I know Beyonce was not a good actress in that in most of the movies. That don't mean that I'm not a Carmen and Hip Hopper. Okay. <laughs> um, but she's legendaric. And so is Tamisha Iman. And yes. but I did not like anything Tamisha wore this week. Actually, this is the I've liked everything Tamisha has worn up until this point. Yes. Um, the first two looks were pretty much the same thing. Um, like the CEO dressed up thing, except she was like old in the first one. 
and she really sold it in the performance, but nothing about the look gave me old back. Again, maybe she could have brought Joey's IV and she could have been dead or something. I don't know. Um, but I didn't I didn't I didn't feel that. And then the look that she made, I will say that it did, it was constructed well. It was definitely made by somebody who knows how to sew. And the the semen that she did on the upper bodice of that looked really nice. Mm-hmm. But the design kind of got lost. And I do think, again, that speaks for that very specific thing that I said, that, like, designing and sewing are different. And then also when you bring in unconventional materials into the thing, like, we've seen this time and time again. Project Runway, for example. The the girls be killing it. And then they get the unconventional uh, materials challenge. Mm-hmm. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, no, boo-boo. I only work with silk and taffeta. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do <laughs> with uh, aluminum foil. What mm-hmm. you want me to do? I don't even use aluminum foil at my house. I don't understand. You know? So, but those looks were not, it's just an, loosen your throat. Right. Loosen your throat. But I wasn't feeling that. I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, boo. But she presented it with confidence. She walked down the runway like she should. And I also do not think that Tamisha had an inflated opinion that her look was that sickening. I think she took in, she know what the judges had to say. No, and that's legit. She didn't. She didn't. I don't think she thought no. she was serving some. No, I'm gagging serve. because I'm gagging because there are some girls who don't have that word of the night self awareness. Yeah. <laughs> to know, like, and she said that when she came into the workroom and untucked. And I don't want to get too much into it because I'll talk more about it later. She came in and she was like, "I'm old school. I see that this is a different form of drag y'all doing, and y'all ate. I understand why I'm in the bottom based on the critiques and what I'm looking at." around the room, right? She is not unaware of the fact that she didn't bring it that night. But some of these other people... Delusions. Of grandeur. Of grandeur. <laughs> grandeur. Yes, we'll get more into that. I will say I do like the versatility that she brought in the first look. She has been giving us looks on looks um, up until now, so she gave tried to give us some campiness, some acting. I enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it the best look overall? No, but I do enjoy she showing us something different. Yeah. Um, um Simone. Like a, ooh. Now now we know that girl. Simone. We you know, if I had to make my bets on it at this point, you know, I am, you know, Simone for the win. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have to hold that opinion off. I don't think that's a secret. I think a lot of people I think the vast majority of the fans are Simone for the win. Yeah. But um look number one, great. Fun bags, Diana Voss. Um, and then she added Eddie, Wendy camp. Williams. I wasn't expecting camp from her. Mm-hmm. Um, she popped the tits. That was great. Mm-hmm. Then she came with this metallic, almost Ooh. microfiber latex wet fabric. I think that was really stunning. I do that believe so that good. the only thing for me is I wish that outfit had an accessory, like a little necklace or a belt, or I needed an accessory. But um, that outfit was stunning. And once again, killing it with the Afrocentric hairstyles, um, Mm -hmm. period. And anytime I see fire engine red truck hair, I think Black people. So I, you know, (laughs) I love that. Rihanna, like I see that, I still see Rihanna on the cover of Vogue when I see that hair color, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And then her last look, you know, it's a mini skirt and a bralette with, uh, I mean, the hair was pretty. And the hair was was dope, yes. And it served as like the rope, so it would have been like rope yeah. for the the braided rope on the on the boat. But I will say this at this point, and Simone is doing well, and she was not in the top this week, and no one's above critique, you know. And I think majority of everything that we've seen from her so far has been extremely referential. And I know this idea that I'm saying is not completely unique, and some people aren't bothered by it, but I am a little bit. Um, Bob the drag queen had mentioned this last season when it came to Gigi Good. Um, and I think we're at the point now in Drag Race, or artists should be at the point where they're wanting to become what's referenced. And I do think reference is cool, but it's actually kind of a bit of a cop out. Like, if everything we see from you is a reproduction of something that we felt for, like, you, you kind of like pimping us out on nostalgia, you know? I like to see a couple looks that have silhouettes or, pa- or that don't look like something that um i've seen redone before you know and there's so much out here that you can reference that is sickening um but i'd like to see some some things that aren't so referential yeah i feel that um as like i said last week i absolutely love the fact that she pays reference to our culture um a lot of it is from the 90s but i also do see the other side of that coin where you know you don't always have to reference something like you could 
be the thing that desires to be referenced. Which I think that exactly. that middle look kind of does, right? It was right. gave me like Afro futuristic, you know. I love yeah. the pants cut out. I love that collar, like. Um, but and I think we'll see more of that. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't a direct the... replica of she like it, she said it referenced Fifth Element. It was inspired by, but it was not an exact replica of the Fifth Element looks, which I mm-hmm. which I like. Um, I think Gautier did Fifth Element costumes, which is funny because I think she just was featured on Gautier's page for doing, they're doing like this hashtag like Gautier at home or something where people oh, yeah. like remake like iconic looks. I saw that. Um, mm-hmm. And she got featured. Uh, Olivia Lux. Um, Olivia Lux they sleep is, on my girl. They is, she's, con- she's consistent. And you know, Rosé is another one that's been consistent. I mean, she lost her first lip sync against Olivia, but uh, it wasn't a bad lip sync. Rosé has been consistently um, doing well too and has not won a challenge and neither has Olivia. I do have a feeling that the ties are going to turn a little bit in the upcoming mm-hmm. episode. Um, they always do. And uh, we're at the point in the season now where the other people that's great will start to, you know, burst through. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think all Olivia's looks to me were satisfying. My favorite one was the one she made herself. Um, that yeah. holographic look. Loved it was it. like... It was like rain on me. It was mm-hmm. it was a, it was cute, and I do have to admit I listened to the pit stop and I, I preferred the pit stop when Bob the drag queen was hosting it, but um, it it's Trixie. It's fine, uh, but Violet was on there and my uh, Shay, my friend Shay was. <laughs> Yeah, and also, I didn't agree with a lot of her opinions. They didn't make no sense to me. Like, I don't understand this this comment that's like, okay, this is cute for the club, but not for Drag Race. I think that is okay comment. But if it's a, a look for the club that is co- extremely elevated, everything does not need to be a ball game. Because then to me, it changes from a drag competition to me. I feel like the, the items need to have spirit and soul and, and camp and double entendres and meanings and mm-hmm. symbolism and art to them. Like, when they just wear the gown, like, I need, and this is why I like, um, I'm, I know I'm kind of blurring the lines a little bit, but this is why I liked Got Mixed Looks, because mm-hmm. it wasn't just a pinstripe suit. It was, the pinstripes were covered in stones, and it, and it had a ruffle, and it had mm-hmm. a bead. It was heightened. It was drag. It yeah. needs to have that, and it, it, Olivia's looks did that for me. Her CEO look was cute. I liked that it had that very traditional masculine striped pattern as the, uh, as the lining in the in the mm-hmm. in the jacket. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cute. I love Olivia in this red, uh in this reddish copper color hair. I think that's a hair color that she wears quite frequently. And yeah. I happen to be a dawning right now. <laughs> and, it looks um, really good on her skin. Yeah. Um the only look well let's talk about it since the internet talking about it. We can talk about it for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I do not think her look was a a bite off of Simone's. I don't know what in what era how that would make sense. How, how would she know, know that Simone was bringing that bringing that similar outfit? Know, how would she know uh, that? That makes no of sense. Of course. And why would she not wear it? That's what she packed for the damn thing. Yeah. Like even also, if you even good. if I it she looked great. <laughs> like it looked great on her. It was well it was well made. She probably paid a grip for it. I'm still gonna wear it. <laughs> like, her, gl- her, gl- her gloves were stoned. The pink mm-hmm. was beautiful. Her 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 black eye, it was good. And I actually, if we go compare, I like her hair better than I like Simone's. So, and we know Simone's look was the top, but there were things to appreciate for both looks. And these type of toxic comparisons gotta go. Yeah, um, it's very low hanging that. fruit um, with no analysis. Yeah, yeah, no analysis, no forethought, no critical thinking. Which got was me. what happens on the internet. Well, because um, the internet is full of all. You know what kind of people be on the internet, girl? We on the internet. You know how I be. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one thing I do want to say about Olivia's money bag look is that I liked it, but I think I would have liked it more as a dress. Like if she would have took, just took the top and made it like a long dress and did away with the pants and still had yeah. those sleeves, it's like buttons all the way down. I think that really could have been. That That's probably, probably, probably That would have looked nicer. That's the way it would have looked yeah. nicer, yeah. Some people... and. <laughs> We'll talk about this next episode, but keep an eye on how Olivia pads and how she looks in drag versus out of drag. I think her padding is interesting, but we could talk yeah. about that later. Yeah. Um, got Mick. Tens Ooh. across the board. She she did Ooh. it. Ooh. Got Mick served. That money bags look. Listen, they were not Blink exaggerating. Down. 
they were not exaggerating when they gave her praise for that. Like they almost didn't give her enough because that was so well done. Glenn like, wasn't, house the house down. Period. It wasn't only like a great. It wasn't only like a great piece, but she styled it and she sold it perfectly. And that's what I mean by like the girls, like outfits not wearing the girls. Like you have to sell the garment. Like I understand you didn't make it. You probably didn't come with the concept. But you as a queen, you as a performer, it's your job to go out there and sell it and to own it. So it was a great, all the elements of the winning, the the winner of this week, she had. That first look was great. That money bags look was top god tier like she did that and then the bag ball look um again was styled perfectly the wigs the glasses the accessories um i liked how it was like club kid little futuristic moment yeah it was dope tens of, like she said tens across the board she did that rose um rose 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 um, so I made up my mind. Glass. Let me get us some of a body last. I made my mind up about Rose. You know, I've been isolating with her. You know, I fuck with her now. But I like Rose. She cool. I think Rose cool. I think Rose I like is a her. little deranged. And I'm I'm <laughs> in what ways? <laughs> Did you not see Untucked last week? That what I they have that has not had any resolve. And I <laughs> What was going on? What was that moment? I don't get it. I'm confused and I am uncomfortable. I'll also be catching her smiling and then stopping abruptly. It's something with it. But I mm-hmm. do like Rose's drag. And I yeah. will say, since people want to talk about who their biggest competition is, um, Rose's one to watch. That's a finale queen. I can tell. I think so. Uh... Rose, Rose's a finale queen. She has been consistently at the top. And she goes start winning. And, and you know what? It, sometimes once you win that first, that one challenge, you're like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Cute. Long as she win, I think if girls, if you win by episode three or four, if you get your first win within the first three, four episodes, you be, it's when you don't get your first win the later on, it's good to be kind of sketch, you know? Yeah. Like um, if you don't win or if you don't have any wins until what, challenge seven or eight, you probably not going to win this competition. I think there's a statistic <laughs> on that, too. I think all the girls yeah. who have won Drag Race have won within the first three episodes. Yeah, and the fact that Simone won twice, you know, that's what that's why she's high-ranking on the top to win. Yeah. And but then yeah, Rosé's looks. Rosé's looks. Um, my favorite was the one she made herself. Um, oh, that was fun. That was fun. It was futuristic. Yeah. It was cute. I think the other looks were good. They just, they weren't like, mm-hmm. um, they didn't floor me, but they were strong and they were consistent and there weren't yeah. things out of place. And um, and I think that's all we really need to say about it. Uh, Tina Burner, I mean, we can kind of speed through Tina as far as I'm concerned. I was not impressed or gagged at all. Also, this red and yellow thing, like, why would you choose to look like ketchup and mustard? I'm really confused. Yeah, I'm so um, confused Also, about that. she does not, and the thing is, I think this red and yellow could work for somebody, you know, if it's done in a very tasteful way. She does not have the right skin tone for this. Like, it makes her look ill. Like, her skin, it looks, gro- yeah. it looks like she's about to throw up. Like, she looks clammy, mm-hmm. um, jaundiced. She looks rosacea. It's giving me... It's giving me diagnosis. You are you know? reading tonight. <laughs> it's giving me diagnosis. Give me diagnosis. Now, the thing is, I think Tina Burner is a talented drag queen. I don't know mm-hmm. how much. I told you, Benji, who Benji is our subtitler. Um, mm-hmm. uh, stay tuned for the end of the season when we release our whole accessibility stuff that we're going to be rolling out as we get better at this. But we're about yes. to be 100% accessible thanks to our boo, Benji. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, Benji don't like her. And I was trying to give her better doubt because you know, I love a messy hoe. I love me a messy <laughs> You're a messy bitch. But no, Tina, absolutely not. Yeah, and I still like Tina. Um, I mean, too, I, I, and I, I do. Looks, yeah. I will say you this, though. In that last, I'm going to tell you what. Tina, tall as fuck, and that bitch can walk in heels. She be pumping it. She yeah. be picking up them legs yeah. and placing them legs. She be strutting it, and she be bounce, bounce, hit it, pose, mm-hmm. uh, hit, hit, walk, walk. I be like, you better. With She's a professional, for ass. sure. You better come home. <laughs> so, nasty, you know, you know she a sex freak. I can tell. She be like, oh, oh. I mean, she was the first one that came in day one and was like, all right, we trapped in these Who's hotels together. Who having sex? Who, who <laughs> right. my Right. Um, so you might be on to something. Um, 
Oh, wait, I'm sorry. How you feel? How you feel about Tina? You got a comment? Because if not, we can go to Gant. <laughs> I just wrote... I have two comments. The dress you met herself, I just wrote, dress with suspenders. Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> It was a well-made dress, though. There was nothing out of place. It was it was patterned well. It was, you know. Yeah, and the fact that she made it out of being bag chair is something to uh, something to no. note. But Honestly, the suspenders threw me off. <laughs> I would have probably tried to use a beanbag chair too because it gives you a lot of fabric. Mm-hmm. A lot of it gives fabric. You some when, volume you un- too. when you uncut a beanbag chair, it actually lays flat because it's mm-hmm. on there and like like a geometric way it's on there. So yeah. it can you can lay it pretty flat. You get a lot of fabric out of that. Yeah, that's probably um, the most like forgiving, most workable yeah. bag that they had in that room. All right, let's move on to Candy. Candy, I got a lot girl. to say about Candy. I got a lot to say about her later, but she um okay. one she's obsessed with being a hoe because she was like she saw the backpack. She was like schoolgirl backpacks, pencils, hoe. Ho! I was like, how'd you get from school to hoe? But I'm mad at you. What I did write is how many times you gonna wear a bra and panties. Or matching separates. How many times are we gonna see that? It's giving very Vanjie in season eleven. She came out with that same, you know, that same bodysuit or that same like swimsuit. How many times are we gonna see this girl? It's episode five. And we've seen it. We already done done this girl. We already done this girl. <laughs> she done already done had hers quite literally uh, with the bra and panties. Okay, I will say this. I do think there's a specific reason. You have to think of the house that she, one Candy's fat. And you need to think of the house that Candy come from. Like, Aja is very sexy. I mean, Aja got an OnlyFans. They be showing that body, all the doing their thing. Yeah. So Dahlia, do, uh, all Dahlia got her body. She got her OnlyFans, too. Mm-hmm. I, I, look, I done bought a lot. Probably, like, 75% of the girls I've at least bought once just to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Dahlia's is one that's worth purchasing. It don't got a lot. I heard of that. I, I don't think it got enough butt fucking on it. But it is really nice. Uh, there's a lot of solo Sasha, stuff. Sasha Bell has a really good one if you really? into white people. And it's, I mean, it's Sasha Bell's is one of my top. We could talk about the girls only fans. We might do a special on that. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can, <laughs> Maybe look, we can, let me look at some of them. We can do a whole episode about yeah. it. <laughs> um, but uh, Candy, I think Candy is trying to serve body, adi, adi as a statement about big girls being able to be show that body, adi, adi, right? And, that's and I fine, think that's but great. But I don't think we need to do a, I think a high waisted panty and a bralette is. You know, red wig and a silver dress, or you know, I, yeah. it's not, it's not, I'm not, and that is not shade because I love Davina DeCampo and uh, I love you, boo. <laughs> and thank you for my cameo. Um, I gotta tell you, Shay got me a cameo from Davina and it was so cute. Um, yes, but Candy, no, now what's it? Is Candy's first look with the magic tricks into it, cute latex yeah. with the little bunny rabbit, little tricks, cute. But after that, nice. I was bored. I didn't think that money helmet on her head was cute. I did not understand why she had a blunt made out of money. I don't know how that went with C.E. Ho. That C-E-Ho. looked like a sage bundle. It didn't look like a blunt. Yeah, Like you like, like, to go smudge like, something. <laughs> have you ever pearled a blunt before? Because that's not what that's supposed to look like. No, it looked like a sage bundle. That's what it looked like. Yeah, well, she needs to sage herself because she got a lot of bad mojo. But, um, a little bit. Uh, yeah, and then the last look, I mean, the last look, I could have had her in my bottom three with that last look, honestly. I think she should have been in the bottom. The book bags on the thing just was not. The book bags, I, I was... I did like the wig. Um, Although, yeah. you know, her I wig line... Wig. Do you? That's yeah, cute. Yeah, I have that wig. I should put it on real quick. It's so cute. Um, yeah. I will say, though, there's, there's a consistent problem with her wig line. I don't know if, like, the lace is not cut or it's not blended. I feel like this week it wasn't pulled far enough. But, yeah, and you also could see where the root, you could see through the weft of the wig yeah. into the wig cap, like underneath. Um, so I don't know if how, I don't know how they did hers because it's hard to make those jumbo, um, bobo, um, hair. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to have a lot of extra big yaki and you have to stuff the yaki with. I don't know how they did hers though. So, um, but I can move on from that. I was not into it, it was cute, meh, whatever. Um, Utica. <laughs> Utica to me had the look, look after look after look after look. She swear up and down that her little the 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 jazz Chicago look was black, but it looked brown under the lights. And I'm gonna go with brown because it looked brown to me oh, and it looked it looked good. black to me. I but you know what? Maybe it's like that dress. Is it blue? Is it blue? <laughs> right. Is it white? I don't know. I don't Regardless know. I of the color, have... though, it looked good Stunning. as well. 
if y'all motherfuckers, and you know, I think I'm at my seven, so I need to stop. It resets to the after show. <laughs> um, Utica is a fashion queen. I don't want to hear no mess. And I did listen to uh, the pit stop because I'm gonna start critiquing the pit stop on here because they got some good call in call outs. I've been checking them. And you can, uh, <laughs> I disagree with what RuPaul had to say. I disagree with Miss Ma- Miss Violet Chocolate, Chocolate, whatever she is, um, had to say she do not need to come down the runway and s- suck it in and pose like mm-hmm. Ru. You know she don't have to do that. She Great. peed on the bag like a dog. Why? Because she was a dog. That's what she is. That's what she feels comfortable doing. And they mm-hmm. kill me trying to psychoanalyze them. Ain't not now one of them on that show got no degrees or credentials in mental health, psychology, um, analyzing personality. Stop trying to read her and try to figure out what she got going on. What you need to figure out is how she sold a couture, one of a kind gown out of a motherfucking sleeping bag with her makeup looking different in every single look with the time Come that they on. have to change in between. Girl, fuck out of here. Good boy. My girl is an artist. And I made a Shut note about that too. I said her campiness does not take away. It adds more to, than it takes away. Like she is giving. Lala Ree gives her Lala Ree experience. You guys have an experience of her own. <laughs> and it mixes all these different elements. It's that the Utica universe. You got another planet. Just, yeah. Right. And if you can't understand that, if you don't get it, that's fine. But don't try to say it's the bad thing because you don't understand it. Similar to last week, when you try to nitpick and you try to critique people, say what's wrong with them, it's usually a reflection of who you are and where you at more than it is about that person. So I hope she doesn't yeah. internalize that and try to switch up her style to please them. Mama, your campiness, your style is what makes Utica Utica. I hope she keeps it. She killed this challenge 100%. That last look was the best look of the night by far. Yeah. And got mixed. Money bags look was a very close second. But the fact that she made this and that a lot of time Stunning. The neck, somebody the said, the zipper, the fabric. She made that in the same amount of time that Lala yeah. <laughs> glued them back on herself. <laughs> yeah, and that's not the fabric, but I meant the pattern of the of the sleeping bags and the way that she used them and how yeah. she created that nice little silhouette. Man, she ate. She ate. This should have been a double win in my book. Like, no, it didn't they need both to be a double win. Won. I'm gonna tell you what I thought. Okay, so tops and bottoms. Top three, bottom three. Do you agree? Mm-mm. The bottom, do you agree? Who would have been your bottom three? My bottom three would have been Joey J, Lala Ree, unfortunately, um, and Candy. I would have swapped Tamisha. Yeah, I would have swapped Tamisha for Candy. Right, uh, and I'm not just saying that because we stand Tamisha. I'm not just saying that because I got into an argument. Literally, my honest opinion is I believe Candy should have been the bottom based on what we saw. Um, yeah, I, I didn't agree with the winners either. Um, Utica was my winner. Utica was you. If I had to pick between the two, Utica would have been my winner. Gottmik would have been a very close second. I would have switched out. Although Rose did really, really well, I would have switched out Olivia for Rose. Same. Yeah, this week, so I would have switched out. Uh, I would have switched Olivia. Yeah, um, but I do agree with the bottom two. The two that had a lip sync, I do agree with that. Yeah, that's who would have lip sync. Can't like Candy wouldn't have lip sync, but Candy would have been in the bottom. She would have been in the bottom. Absolutely. And I think she needs to to help with that delusion that she got going on. Yeah, she needs to she needs to be checked. She needs a reality check. Like you yeah. think, let me not. We we say that for her. We got to get into it in just three minutes. <laughs> so the lip sync, La La Ree versus Joey J. Joey Ooh. J said it. She says, I know how La La Ree lip sync, and she's about to give it to me, but I'm about to give me a little sum sum too. And I think it was a good lip sync. I think they both I served very it. well. They actually had a very similar presentation. Um mm-hmm. You know, it, you know, in it, I like that. Joey took some big strides from one end of the stage to the other, which I love when they utilize the space. Yeah. Lala Ree gave me comedy because Joey J threw that money and it rained on both of them. I wouldn't have threw the money while I was standing next to her. That's mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you throw it away from you so it doesn't fall on you, girl. But right. no, I agree. Like it was a really good lip sync. Um, I want to commend Joey J. Let me say something nice about her because she held her own. Like, yep. she didn't go into, because we, we've seen this time and time before. You know you're going against a very strong lip syncer, a very strong performer. So some of the girls just give up. Like, oh, no, I'm about to go home. So or why even the try? Other thing, the other thing happens. Either they give mm-hmm. up or they get desperate and they perf- overperform like Rock'em. Overperform. Rock'em, Rock'em <laughs> I didn't think Rock'em should have been in the bottom, but she Rock'em was, was so desperate. Yeah. So desperate. 
You know, mm-hmm. you can't do that. You have to give a solid performance that has some calm to it. Yeah. Uh, Joey did not give up. He wanted to stay. He showed it. But La La Rie is just a performer. Like she the ate. La La Rie experience, when, baby. When she picked up them dollars, I wrote, that was a parallel to when Darian Lake in season six was collecting the fake tips when she uh-huh. lip synced to Point of No Return. By the way, Darian Lake is the reason why I love that song, Point of No Return. Um okay. To me, those were parallels. I just really enjoyed it. Um, La La Rie just ate. Like, I'm so, I'm sorry. Like, it was just they both did well, but the clear winner for me was La La Rie. Uh, and speaking of season six, season thirteen might be we're gonna get to season six when you have a full season of really well done lip syncs. Um, yeah, uh, I like a good lip sync, and the, the, I'm gonna say the past two or three seasons have not been given strong, uh, consistent, strong. I haven't got consistently strong, strong lip sync since for me since season ten. Season ten has some good lip syncs in it, um, mm-hmm. but I didn't. I'm not. I haven't been a fan of like eleven and twelve. To me, did not give really good. Like outside of the Evie versus. Um, a uh, Brooklyn moment, like the lip sync has been very middle of the road. Like you get one good here and there, but when you go back in the day, season five, All Stars mm-hmm. two, um, Ooh, season six, season the six. girls was lip syncing house down. Yeah, for literally for blood. <laughs> yeah. They was like, if I'm going out, I am going to go out kicking and screaming. Do you? I also just say it, boo. Go ahead. I said, I also wrote, this is very churchy. I said, but I also wrote, she danced like David danced because she was coming out of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I will dance, dance. Mama dance like David did. Like David, David. Oh my God. So uh, we have lost Joy J. Uh, La La Rie takes it home. We have lost Joy J. Uh-huh. Our winner this week is Got Mixed. So, so far for the win, we have two wins by um, Simone. We mm-hmm. have one win by Denali. We have one win by Gamic. Mm-hmm. So we're we're doing it. That's what we that's what we have. That's the stats for now. That's the stats for now. And um that's how we do it. Hey everybody. Um, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to Drag from the Left, your weekly digital series where you come to get all the drag race drama of it all, and we lay it on top of relevant social events that are happening in the world from a radical leftist perspective. Um, this is the end of our show. If you'd like to stay on with us, you know, in just a few moments, we're going to transition on into Call In, Call Out, the exclusive after show from Drag from the Left, where we give the drama of it all from a more political set of eyes baby um so we'll be back in just a minute be sure to follow us online at drag from the left across all platforms that's d-r-a-g-f-t-l drag from the left um you go on there you can find avery and i um i and avery Every and me. Um, Every's the one that does well with English and words. I don't want to hear y'all critiquing my grammar. Y'all can suck. Yeah, I was, I was gonna um, say every and me, but you got it. You got there. You, yeah, you know, whatever. You understood me, and I, did. Um, I will see you all in just a few seconds. Let's take a two minute break, and we'll get back in for call and call out. I see you all soon. Yes, we'll be right back, y'all. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 